Good morning, everybody. I toast to you and all you do. Today, hopefully you can hear me. We I made a video yesterday, uploaded it. I was all excited. I was like, look, I got this up several days before the dark moon. Doing so good. We're getting on top of things. And then someone immediately, thank you so much, though, for letting me know. I really appreciate it. Very much thank you. Uh, that there was no sound in the video. And I, I watched it and I even fast forwarded through it to see if like maybe it started up somewhere in the middle. But no, no sound in that video. So it is what it is, which is kind of funny because the video started with the neighbor hammering and the dog barking and all kinds of noise. And at one point in the video, I even apologized. Like, I, don't, I don't know when the dog's going to stop barking, but you guys couldn't hear it anyways. But I really appreciate you letting me know that it didn't work. Thank you. Uh, and we're going to try again today, this time with sound. So I hope you can hear me. I feel like it is just another very obvious reminder that I need to go out and get better recording sound. I need one of them fuzzy microphones. Yeah, okay. So look at, I'm almost there. It's just terrifying. I just think about people watching me and I get nervous. And then I'm like, yeah, <laughs> let's wait on that. But hopefully you can hear me. And thank you so much to the person who let me know. I really, really appreciate it. And, you know, because if someone hadn't told me, I wouldn't know. So that video has been deleted. I deleted it because there was no sound. So thank you for coming back. And thank you for letting me know. And hopefully today you can hear me. But we are here today for the dark moon in Virgo. And also a little bit about the equinox and the transits that are happening right now. We have a very buzzing energy. I just had the urge to shake the whole table to like give the simulation of the energy happening right now. And I feel like a lot of people are in major states of change. And maybe in your life, in your spirits, in your, you know, life growth all of those things, and we're really feeling this buzzing energy of the earth. So not only have we had these transits that are happening and going to continue to happen like the big square and the grand trine, but we also have the earth going into the equinox and our, you know, the end of summer and the beginning of fall and making that transition. And this is a time when we really feel the earth's energy buzzing. A lot like in the spring, when you feel the buzz of the earth, you're like, oh, I have to get out and do something. But now the energy is about manifesting. It is about, you know, reaping the benefits of what you have already manifested. It's about really knowing your resources, about starting to take count. So in ancient times, it would have been literally about counting grain, about, you know, how many cows do we have? How much grain do we have? How can we feed everybody? How are we going to balance this? What are we going to do to survive? Now it's about what is the information that I have learned? What have I done for myself this year? What have I done for the community this year? What is, you know, what have I done and what do I need in order to keep doing the things that I need to do and want to do? And, you know, what are my resources? And so as we approach that, it can often feel anxious. Um, as someone with mania, it really triggers my mania. So a lot of the people that I talk to who also share in the mania, they're like, I don't know why, but come August and September, I just feel like I cannot sit still. And sometimes I just, first of all, just get grounded, take a moment, take a breath, and then remind yourself sometimes that anxious energy is coming from the earth around you and you don't have to manifest that in your reality. You can't just take a breath and be like, okay, earth, you do your thing. The earth is buzzing. We are preparing. I'm doing my thing. We can all, whew, it's okay. So I just encourage everyone to take that moment. And while you're taking those moments, it's really good to take those moments in gratitude. When you start to feel overwhelmed with all of the things you need to do or want to do or can't do or just the anxious energy, stop and take a moment to think about the things that you're grateful for. Instead of focusing on that anxiety, focus on, 
you know, I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for the things that I have. I'm thankful for the people watching this video. I'm thankful for the person who told me that my video didn't have sound yesterday. Uh, and just put that gratitude out there. Hmm. Take that moment. Like right now, pause the video. Take a moment to show some gratitude. Like, be thankful. And you'll find as you put more gratitude out into the world, that will return to you. Just like any karmatic law, what you put out will come back to you. So if you're putting out gratitude and you're being thankful, that's going to come back to you and it's going to come back to you in a grander self. It's going to be more of that. It's going to be this abundance. You'll be like, wow, this is amazing. I'm so grateful. And it'll just keep coming to you. Which is funny because sometimes I have this conversation when we talk about uh, people who go to church and, you know, they're like, well, Jesus made it so that I can do this. And they have this great gratitude and they're putting out that gratitude energy. And every time they say thank you, you know, to Jesus, they are showing that they're putting out that grateful energy. And so sometimes that is mocked. But at the same time, you have to say, if, well, if I, every day I woke up and I said thank you to the world, uh, to the earth to the mother goddess, to the father god, to the son, to whoever it may be, you get out and you say thank you. It's the same energy. You're putting out that energy of gratitude, and that's what's going to return to you. So if we just get up every day and we say, I am thankful for this, I'm thankful for my home, I'm thankful for this breath, I'm thankful for this day, I'm thankful for a little cooler weather, and just be gra grateful, then those things will return to you. And you will begin this flow of beautiful energy. It is just like that a endless source of love that you have inside. And when you tap into that, it will flow freely. This endless source of gratitude that you put out will come back to you. And so as we transition into the fall and we get into this change in energy and we begin to feel that, it's important to just put that gratitude out and be thankful. And then you'll find, oh, now these things are coming back to me. Sometimes when you counsel, when I counsel people and I talk to people about, you know, their woes in life and all they do is focus on, well, I don't have this, I don't have that, I don't have the job I want, all these things are bad, negative, negative, negative. All they're spitting out into the world is this negative spew. Like, and then that's all that they're getting back. When you talk to someone who has nothing, who says, I am grateful for all of the things that I do have, you see that they're receiving these things. <clears throat> and they begin to come back to them and then they can, you know, prosper and, and grow and do all of the things that they need to do. And so as we're in this time of kind of anxious energy of change, not just with the season, but also with the transits that are happening and the major destruction that's happening and the crazy things that are happening all over the world, just take a moment to be grateful. So, Let's talk more about the dark moon now and the transits that are happening. So we have the dark moon on the 14th or the 15th if you're in the UK and, and probably Australia. Uh, and it will be on in Virgo. Now the Virgo energy So a lot of times when we talk about Virgo energy, we get caught up on the structure in this you know, Virgo's energy will help you create structure and boundaries and guidelines and order that can sometimes be overwhelming. So we joke about Virgos telling other people what to do or being really controlling of their own environment. But it is often overlooked that Virgo in the aspect of the goddess is, like I wrote this down because when she said it, is watching another YouTuber. Uh, if I could remember her name, I would tell you right now. But she does uh, moon journals. Anyway, so Virgo is the symbol of wholeness. And we often get confused with the modern definition of Virgo and Virgin. And that kind of energy, that purity energy, with the ancient energy of wholeness and self-sufficiency and capability of to be of oneself fully able to do anything and um, as a goddess Virgo was an amazing strength and 
very wise, but very capable. And she didn't need a man or another person or anything in order to achieve all of the things in which she achieved. And so this idea of wholeness and being able to achieve all of the things that you need and having all of the answers inside of you is a very, can be very comforting. Like I know that I have the resources and answers that I need so that I can step forward. Now, as with all things, don't go, you know, high headed with that and I know everything because nobody knows everything. There's always room for growth, but that's part of being whole is knowing that you have room for growth. So knowing that you can ground in the information that you have and use that in order to step forward and achieve your goals of being in a better state of wellness. That's the other aspect of the energy of Virgo is that we are healthy, we are sustainable, we are happy, we are pure in ourself. And this is an energy that is echoing so strong with all of the other astrological energies, it's hard not to talk about the transits while we talk about this, because it is like a major highlight right now of this stepping into your own authority, leading with truth, knowing that you have the answers and all of the information that you need in order to succeed and step forward and moving into the state of higher self, of, you know, closer to that ideal self. So let's get more into the transits so that we can talk more about all of that. Uh, and <coughs> sorry, I like inhaled some saliva. All right. So we have the chart right here and it, you can still see we have this grand kite that we had last uh, full moon. Uh, it's something different over here. Now it's the sun and moon instead of Mars and Peles and uh, Venus. Well, Mars and Peles it was. Uh, Venus is now direct, but for a retrograde, we have a like a hard hit here. We have Mercury, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, Pluto, Kryon, and Eris are all in retrograde. So this is really a time to turn inward, a time of introspection, a time to slow down and really think and process. And with the interaction that these planets are having, they're really telling you to heal, to turn inward, to heal, to really use all of this information that you've gotten over the last couple of years, over the last couple of months, over the last couple of full moons, and really process that and say, okay, look, the universe has presented me with all of this information. I cannot close my eyes to this anymore. I need to step forward. I need to do this. And all of these retrogrades are a strong reminder of that slow down, turn inward. You have the answers. Here's the information. Now make a plan. And this dark moon in Virgo is a really good time to make that plan and to say, okay, look, I recognize that these are the things I need to work on. Here are my coping mechanisms. Here are my insecurities. Here are my ego. Here are the things that I really need to just deal with. Here are the relationships. So we have Venus that just, as you noticed, it wasn't on that list. So it went direct on the third. And it is, it is like a moment of, we talked about this a little bit in the last video where it's coming out of um, from behind the sun. So we're going to be able to see it. And so as it comes back out and we can see it and it's going direct, we have this clarity in order to express our feelings. So just like when we talked about Virgo and how we don't always think about these aspects, when we talk about Venus and we talk about how it has to do with money, love, relationships, sometimes it's hard to see where all of those kind of go together and you're like, wow, that kind of, I mean, in reality, we see where relationships and money go together, but jokes aside, we need to, <clears throat> we don't always see how that is, but it's about how we express our emotions and with our actions. And that is done in our interactions, in our love life, in our relationships, and how we spend our money and our resources in order to achieve the things that we want. And that's that expression. So Venus is this expression of our emotions and our inner self. And as we step into this heavy, well, as we are walking through this time of heavy transition and Venus is coming out, it really is like a breath of fresh air. Like, okay, 
I now know, I see the ideal self, I have pondered, I have thought, and now I'm going to really analyze that. So Venus is also squared to Jupiter right now, and Jupiter in retrograde is, instead of that Jupiter energy expanding outward, that Jupiter energy is expanding inward. And it has a lot to do with, you know, putting your wisdom into actions, really fully fulfilling all, like, com completion. Um, putting your word, <laughs> oh, I don't know how to say this. Um, it is really about fulfillment and having that wisdom, energy, manifestations, all of these things really through all the way, like, you know, all, the energy going all the way through to your fingertips, all the way expanding, you know, out, you're really doing this and your words, your thoughts, your actions, you're, it's going through you all the way. And I just, I don't know why, but the, it's on the tip of my tongue. I'm sure somebody will be like, this is it. Anyways, it'll come to me later in the video. I'll be like, ta -da! So this Venus square to Jupiter really is like, take that aha moment. Take that beaming, idealized, like, I know this is what I, this is, I know how to express my feelings. I know how to get my, and really live that. Really put that through to all of your cells, all to your being, all through you, and then manifest it. And it is, Venus is also sextile to Mars. So that really brings in this like fiery, motivated, like you can do the, get her done. That's, you can do it and move forward and step forward with this wisdom and all that you have gained and all of the insight that you have and really put it into action. And then we come to our things that are reoccurring, which are also in the same kind of light telling you to deal and process and and analyze and and then make that transition we have a lot of transitional energy so uranus is retrograde right now it is trying to pluto it is trying to the sun and moon it is conjunct with jupiter so it is also square to venus and it is quincux no semi tri uh Oh, now, see, I always get them backwards because they semi-sextile. The symbols are one is up and one is down. It's really confusing sometimes. So they're semi-sextile to uh, the North Node. And Uranus is really bringing in this eruptive shaking energy. And it can be devastating. We see it on the Earth. We have floods and fires and crazy things happening all around the world that have destroyed communities. Earthquakes, floods, hurricanes. I mean, it is just emotionally overwhelming to watch the news and not the normal news, but to like go out and seek out local news. If you watch local news right now from Morocco, from uh, Greece, from Hawaii, from even Nevada, like just all, oh, even Burning Man got flooded. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I don't mean to laugh, but it is this flooding energy. I'm not laughing at their just devastation. It's a horrible, sad situation. Those people were stuck. It's also interesting that I didn't realize how rich they all were until I've been watching the news on it. But flooding, just crazy everywhere. And this Uranus energy is very much like that on the Earth. We're feeling it, but we're also feeling that internally. You talk to people and they're like, wow, well, I just quit my job that I've worked at for over 10 years, or I'm making this big move to another city, or I'm doing these huge new things, big changes. Eruptive change. And Uranus being so influential right now because it's pretty much involved with everything, but looks like Mars uh, and the South Node. So every other planetary body it's retrograde is touching and it is influencing and so we have this really disruptive energy but I just want to remind you that this is will, will turn out to be a good thing in the long run and as long as we step forward with integrity and we 
we, we have to take off these blinders. So let's talk about a little bit of the other influences. It'll better explain some of that. I don't, I guess it'll make a bigger picture that astrology is not just one thing. You can't just pick out one planet or one aspect and be like, okay, here's all the answers. Just like with all things, it is an interconnected web of so much energy and information. So Uranus is in a T or a, uh, uh, grand kite. So it makes a grand trine with Pluto, the sun and moon, which is a, Again, this disruptive change with great truths. But the sun and moon soften this energy to remind us that the, on the other side, we are going to manifest something beautiful. We are going to bring about change that is going to create this new beginning that is what we want. So you just have to see that on the other side and be able to step through this big change. And as the world, like literally in a lot of places, is crumbling, we have to step up and see the truth. We have to step up and say, this is what is right. This is what needs to happen. We have to stop letting these horrible things continue. And we have to do the right thing. You know, in places like Hawaii, Canada is on fire like crazy. And in these places, we really have to step up and say, you know, this is what, in Hawaii specifically, we have to step up and say, this land is native land. If you are not a native, you cannot buy property here, period. End of story. Like there are already enough wealthy people who own land there. We're not saying those people have to sell, but you can't buy any more land. If you are a corporation, if you are a foreign entity, it doesn't matter. You should not be able to buy land in Hawaii. This is native land. This is a place where their kingdom used to be that we massacred and destroyed. And oh, I'm going to get really emotional. Let's not get there. Okay, let me just say, the indigenous people of Hawaii need to have their property returned to them. Their houses need to be rebuilt, and $700 is, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all, so I'm just going to stop. I don't want to get political. We need to do the right thing. I have to step up. I mean... We need to do the right thing. We need to call on the government. We need to call on the people. We need to call on the communities. We need to just do the right thing. In your local areas, you need to do the right thing. There are injustices happening at every level and every place and everywhere. And with Eris and retrograde and this conjunction with Pluto, which brings it into this trine, it's a weird, we got some weird things going on right now. Everything is so interconnected because you have the grand kite that has Pluto, the sun and the moon, Uranus and Jupiter, and Neptune. Then you have Uranus and Neptune and Pluto, or Uranus and Neptune, and the North Node making a little tiny trine with <laughs> connecting those. Then you have Pluto and the South Node and the North Node in this grantee that we've been talking about a lot that is really rattling foundations and bringing up truths. And it's really funny to me because we talk about astrology and you're like, oh, it's not real. And it's a, people are always like, oh, this is BS and there's no whatever. But if you look at governments all around the world right now, if you look in people's homes and people's lives and communities from the top down to the bottom up, like everywhere in between, you are seeing truths being revealed. Uh, pedophiles, drug dealers, people who shouldn't have guns, uh, drugs in the White House. These are just things happening in the United States. If you look in other countries, you have more huge things coming out. Um, just, you know, dramas and truths and greed and lust and... <clears throat> all over. And we have a war going on over what? Greed. That's it. This is that's what it's about and it's disgusting that people are dying for some rich people to sit on top and and like play chess with these people's lives. This is not okay. These are the injustices that we need to stand up for. We have to say something. And this T, this grand T is just throwing it in our face over and over again. Normally for the last, you know, 30, 40 years, we just put on our blinders and we walk through like, oh, I know they said something, but maybe that's not real. We just keep going. 
but you, you, you can't look the other way anymore. Even like people who are hardcore into one side are like, well, you know, I, I, I got a lot of information coming to me that is really showing me that there might be another way. There might be another opinion. There could be another side to this story. And you're really seeing that over and over and over again. <clears throat> And those truths being revealed, we have to listen to them. We have to step up. We have to do something about it. Now, interesting situation going on with Neptune and these truths being revealed is that Neptune in retrograde and in its location with Pluto and the sun and the moon and everything that's going on, Neptune has the, it is the planet of illusion. It is the planet of disillusion. It is the planet that brings you visions and quests and intuition in this very state of altered consciousness. When it's in retrograde and how it's interacting with all of these other planetary bodies, it is like, you know, if you're wearing rosy, you're wearing your rose colored glasses and you're seeing the world and then suddenly your rose colored glasses get really, really, really rosy. So rosy that you're like, wow, I got to, I got to take these off. This is not reality. And then you're like, bam, look, now I see the truth. This Neptune and where it sits and how it's sitting through this trine right now is really doing that. It is really like, you need to listen to your intuition. It is over exaggerating these illusions or delusions or disillusions or blinders or however you want to put it that you have on yourself on the world around you on your relationships on your interactions with the community on the government like at all levels and so it's time to take off those rosy color glasses it's time to see these truths that are all around us and it's time to step forward with that and I know what Like, as I talk about this, it seems very scary and like, oh, these are all bad truths, but not all of them are bad. I know someone who has this amazing opportunity but for them, and they have all of these artists that are ready to do this work for them, and they're just nervous about starting a new project that they've never tried before, but the universe is like throwing resources at them, like, just do it, and it's a good thing. (laughs) And so some of these truths are good truths. They're like aha moments. Like, oh, I just had this realization that I don't have to carry this coping mechanism anymore because I've healed. I've moved forward. We're stopping generational traumas. We're doing things to make things better. And so not all of the truths being revealed are going to be bad. So there's always two sides. It's going to be unique for each person. And each person is going to step into this transition in a different way. However, this is a big transitional time. Not only do we have the spring energy or the fall energy, the seasonal change, uh, but we also have this cosmic moment that's being highlighted and not just a little bit. It's not, you know, often we talk about a transit and it happens for a couple weeks, a couple days, a moment, but this trine between Pluto and Uranus and and Jupiter, because Jupiter is going to stay next to Uranus for a minute, uh, and Neptune is going to stay together. This square between the north and south node of Pluto is going to keep going. This conjunction has been going on with the north node and Cryon and Eris for quite some time now, really pushing for us to see these truths to heal this generational trauma, to heal our, you know, past life trauma. I've been talking actually quite a bit about past lives with several people. And, you know, people are like, well, how do you do that? How do you get into that? And I'm like, well, this energy is really present right now. So if you just open yourself up to that and you're just like, I want to have this and you just kind of present that, it'll present itself. Now I do say that with a warning Past life regression work can be overwhelming. Often when we begin to do work with our past lives, the moments in which we remember are the moments that imprinted on your soul. So these are highly emotional moments. And unfortunately, just like with our psyche that we have in our current life, we remember negative things more than we remember positive things. So when you begin to do past life regression, sometimes the moments that you remember can be incredible 
incredibly overwhelming, terrifying, uh, consuming. And I speak from personal experience. I, the first time I had a past life regression dream, I was much too young to understand it and it just never went away. And as I got older and I began to understand and I began to kind of work with that, this moment made such an impression on my soul that I cannot get over it. And there's a couple moments that in my past lives, they have made that kind of impression. And if that's something that you want to work with right now and you're beginning that journey, this is a good time to do it. Just be prepared when you step into that to do it from a place of healing and understanding and to step back if it becomes too much, give yourself a break, relax, it'll be there. (laughs) It'll be there in your next life if you don't want to deal with it now. You just, it's okay. And some things aren't meant to be dealt with in the way that we think they are meant to be. I don't know. It's kind of a weird, it's an interesting situation. But that kind of magic, that kind of energy, that kind of work right now is really, really strong. Working with even childhood traumas. You know, we block out things that have happened and we don't think about them. And then now those things are being revealed. I had a card reading and she brought up an instance. She says, well, what happened when you were at this age? And it was funny because at first when she asked me, I said, well, oh, maybe it was this. But then later as I thought about it, I said, whoa, whoa, wait. You know, that's the year that we had our car accident. That is the year that things kind of changed in our household. And this is why. And like it, like it was just this random aha moment like oh now I under I just understand a little bit better the chain of events and I'm able to look back and kind of better understand how things went and turned out the way that they did so you're getting a lot of that information and these can be good things it's not necessarily this doom and gloom and the world's falling apart and everything's on fire and the world is flooding I mean that's happening unfortunately but as as always And as we have always done, we will rebuild. We just have to rebuild better. We have to do a better job. We have to stand up with integrity. We have to do the right thing. I was just listening to this Tracy Chapman song, and she talks about the whole world's broken. We have to start all over. We have to make a new beginning. We have to, like, just get rid of this. And we have to move forward in a unified, beautiful world that, you know, steps forward with kindness and integrity and honor and we will create this beautiful world like I feel so strongly about this I almost want to cry so okay not that dramatic but I do feel very passionate about this I do really feel like not only are we being told like from the cosmic energy of the universe like this is happening And we're seeing it. We're seeing it in the news. We're seeing it in our communities. You know, they're talking about how we're educating our children and we're having this like wake up moment. Please, please wake up. What's important to teach children is science, math, reading, reading, reading. And then when they can read and they can read really well, they can go out and read all kinds of books and they can form their own opinions and they can do their own things and they can can become these beautifully educated beings who can then go out into the world and make better choices. They need to learn how to read. We need kids with basic math skills. We need kids with basic problem solving skills. I don't know what happened to this. Like we don't teach kids problem solving skills. We just teach them to eat the information and parrot it out and then tell us what we told them to say. And that's not education. We need to get back into this questioning our world around us. We need to be teaching children about curiosity. We need to be teaching about growth and plants and animals and life. See, I'm saying on all levels, (laughs) on all levels, things are just, the, the foundations are being rattled. People are, are no longer able to just sit by and watch as the world is shaking around us, telling us that we have to make these changes. If we don't do a better job in our communities, if we don't do a better job living in harmony with earth, if we don't do a better job being decent human beings, it's going to end up like that movie Idiocracy. 
And that's a sad thing to think about. And if you haven't seen that movie, go watch it so you could be scared for our future too. I tell all my friends who are like really smart, good people, they're like, oh, I don't want to have kids. There's just too many people in this world and, you know, whatever. They, you know, I have even some friends who are like, I don't want to contribute to the problems in society. And I'm like, you're a decent human being and you'd make a good parent. You should have children so that you can raise good children who are also decent human beings and can be productive members of society. Like, we need, we just, we need to step up and make these changes. And the universe is really telling us this. On an individual level, you know, you are getting the answers. You are being told, here is how you heal. Here are the opportunities that you need to do. Here is the truth so that you can heal, so that you can move forward, and that you can be this ideal self. You can be this better person. So I really encourage everyone to take this time under the dark moon to sit and really process all of the information that you've gotten. This is a great time to sit down and do some journaling. Get a lot of pages and just start journaling. Journal all of the lessons that you've learned. Journal the traumas that you're still dealing with. Draw, you know, the, the dramas that are bothering your life, the issues in your world. Like, write it down. Journal it. Think about it. And the answers are going to come with to you. If you just start journaling, you're like, okay, here's my problem. Please give me an answer. That answer is going to come to you. You're just going to keep writing, I bet, and it'll just come to you. That free writing is going to be really strong. Dream magic is going to be really strong. Introspective magic, you know, this is, this is in abundance around us right now. And as I say that, I am just again reminded that that abundance is also that you have this abundance of love that can just flow forth from you and that can help you have the confidence and courage to step forward into this new self and to do the right thing and to just really be honest. Pluto in retrograde is really, and in the way that it's interacting with everything right now, it is just like pulling out all of these deep dark secrets and saying hey we need to be honest we need to really talk about this we need to put this all out on the surface neptune says take off those rose colored glasses because i'm just going to keep making them more rosy until you're like dang i can't even see it so rosy uh <laughs> let's see reality because the truth is there the answers are right in front of you the positive encouragement is there. I know that it can feel like you're standing in this pile of rubble and waste and destruction and like all around you is the rubble of life. And the answer is there. The The thing that you need to do is there. The, the resources are there. The, the wisdom, everything that you need is available. You just have to step out of being the victim. You just have to step out of setting aside. You just have to step out of looking the other way. You just have to stand up and take it and do it. And you will achieve this. You will be that better person. You will achieve the goals that you want. You will find the success that you need. And you will you will win. <laughs> we will all win. Uh, I've talked about this in other videos, but if each person stepped up and stood up and did the right thing and acted with integrity and kindness and, and just this noble energy and this, hello airplane, <laughs> so loud. Just take a drink of coffee real quick. If we all stepped up to do the right thing every time, then the world would be a much better place. Every time I see anywhere that someone just stood by while someone was hurting and recorded with their phone or just walked past as someone was getting assaulted and just look, looked the other way. <laughs> it's going to happen again. Ready? Hello, train. <laughs> okay, I think he's done now. <laughs> uh, I feel like that's a subtle reminder that this video has probably gone too long. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I know that's a, really a lot. I feel like this is a really heavy energy. 
I just want to be encouraging that the energy is, even though it is heavy and it is destructive and we feel this like earth shattering, crazy, dividing nonsense. I mean, just so much crazy going on right now. This is all like a reality check to help motivate you to stand up and do the right thing. And we just all have to stand up and do the right thing. So I really encourage you to take that time, take this introspective time to really think about who it is that you are. Oh, I almost forgot. There's one last thing we have to talk about because it's very important for this. We have Saturn retrograde is at opposition to Mercury retrograde. And this is like a strong reality check in your thoughts, words, actions, schema, like this cycle. We often think one thing, we do another thing because the outside world has told us we need to do that or we think that's what needs to happen, even though that little voice in our head says, no, no, don't do that. We still have this, oh, that's how we act. And then when we talk about it, because we can't reconcile the difference between what we think should happen and what actually happened or what we did, we suddenly find that these are not in alignment. These do not match. And this Saturn, Mercury, retrograde opposition going on right now is like a a kick in the butt to remind you that you need that to align. Your thoughts, your words, your actions, they need to align. You say what you mean, you mean what you do, you do what you say, that kind of cycle. We have come to this place where it is crazy how many people I talk to who they're like, I went to this thing and they said one thing, they did another, or they told me they were going to do it like this and it happened a different way, or I didn't even get a product at all. Or, you know, when I do web design with people, they're like, I paid them all this money and they have all my passwords and I can't even access my own website because, well, they, who knows what they did. And there's no integrity. There's no accountability. And this Saturn Mercury opposition is that check. It is checking you on like it is your reminder. It is your moment. Like it's going to come in your face. It's going to be like, here, you said this and you did something else. You thought this, you said this and you did this, but none of those things, none of them aligned with each other. And sometimes this can be about really little silly things, you know, like, yeah, I cleaned out the dryer vent, but you actually didn't. And now the dryer vent is really full and the clothes aren't dry. (laughs) And suddenly you're like, I think I cleaned it out. I must have cleaned it. You just convince yourself of that reality. And that's not really what happened. So you have to like really put those together and really process that. And when you find that you're having conflicts and you're like, oh, Mercury retrograde is really kicking my butt right now. Well, that's why. Because your thoughts, words, and actions aren't aligning. And you are not, there's no fluidity fluidity between this. Uh, And sorry, I was just looking at what sign they are in. And uh, uh, Pisces and Virgo kind of going on there. But they're really calling that out. So you have a lot of like, do the right thing. Just stand up and do the right thing. That is what you're being called to right now, all the way around. Anywhere you feel like, oh, the world is shaking and I just can't do this, it's because you're not you're not taking the right steps. You just got to step in the right direction and then you'll find that there are these golden, beautiful, pearly gate steps that are like, come to the other side. Ah, and then we're all going to find this beautiful place of an amazing community where everybody has great integrity and we all act out of kindness and, you know, it'll be an amazing place. So thank you so much for watching. As always, if you have any questions, if at some point in the video you were like, oh, I have no idea what you're talking about, write it down in the comments. Let me know. Um, And uh, sorry, I feel like we didn't like concisely go over the things that I, but I did, I'm sure. That's it. I've made this video so many times now, I'm not sure exactly what I said in this one, but I'm glad that today the sound works, and thank you so much for letting me know that it didn't work. Again, I am so grateful for all of you that watch my videos, especially if you make it all the way here to the end. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I have 
Hope that you have a blessed dark moon and that this energy helps you to really see that you have the power to achieve all of the things that you need to achieve. You just have to step up with that wisdom. You have to heal. You have to allow that healing to happen so that you can grow and step forward and really achieve all of those goals. So you can do it. I promise. Many great, many thanks. And I hope that you all have a fantastic day.